Good morning children. In the previous video, we have done till this forced vibrations. Today we will have to start with the next topic that is resonance. Next topic that is resonance. Okay. So before going into that, a quick recap of what we studied in the last class. So at the end of the video, I was telling you about forced vibrations, the two cases of forced vibrations. Okay, so there, were, there are two bodies in forced vibrations. One will be the natural body that is the original body and its frequency will take it as Fn. Okay, this is the original body. Then you have an external body that is used to keep this body in forced vibration. Okay, that is called Fe. So we have two bodies in forced vibrations. There will be a natural body and there will be an external body. This external, this is also a vibrating body. So it will also have, have a frequency. This is also a vibrating body. Now this external body helps this natural body to keep vibrating continuously. Okay, and it forces it into vibration. So that's what forced vibration is all about. So the definition is vibrations of a body which take place under the influence of an external periodic force acting on it are called forced vibrations. Okay. Now in forced vibrations, there are two cases. If the frequency of natural body is equal to the is not equal to the frequency of external body. No, first case. Second case, if the frequency of natural body is equal to the frequency of external force. Now, in this case, the body vibrates with a small amplitude. Okay. In this case, the natural body vibrates with a large amplitude. And this case is called as resonance. So, we can say resonance is a special case of forced vibration in which frequency of the external periodic force is equal to the natural frequency of the body and therefore the natural the original body starts vibrating with a larger amplitude and that is called resonance okay let's go to the definition first so first point is resonance is a special case of forced vibration then the definition goes like this definition of resonance when the frequency of an externally applied periodic force Okay, this is the first point. When the frequency of an externally applied periodic force on a body is equal to its natural frequency, then the body readily begins to vibrate with an increased amplitude. This phenomena is known as resonance. So, this is the definition of resonance from here till here. And these vibrations are called resonance vibrations. So, condition for resonance, same. Resonance occurs only when the applied force causes forced vibrations in the body and frequency of the applied force is exactly equal to the natural frequency of the vibrating body. Now, um, you will be seeing a short video which, um, which shows, the, shows an experiment that will help you understand resonance better. <laughs> Now, let us study an interesting phenomena for understanding what a resonance is by doing a simple activity. Let us arrange two hollow sound boxes opened at one end such that their open ends face each other. Mount two tuning forks A and B of the same frequency on them. Now, let us set fork A into vibration. Observe that the other fork B also begins to vibrate and a louder sound is heard. We will now understand why a louder sound is heard. The vibrating tuning fork A sets up vibrations in the air column of its sound box. These vibrations travel to the air column of the sound box of fork B. The air column of B vibrates with the frequency of A and transmits these vibrations to the fork B and excites it. Then fork B is said to be in resonance with fork A. 
Note that A and B are bodies of the same natural frequency. When the frequency of the applied periodic force is equal to the natural frequency of a body, the body readily takes up the vibrations and begins to vibrate with increased amplitude. Resonance is the phenomena in which one of the two bodies of the same natural frequency is set into vibration, the other body also vibrates with a larger amplitude under the influence of the first body. Resonance between two or more bodies of the same natural frequency is a particular case of forced vibrations. We will now do a simple experiment. Let us take four identical balls A, B, C and D and suspend them from a rubber tube MN at different points. Pendulum A and pendulum B are pendulums of the same length. So their natural frequencies are the same and pendulum C is a little shorter than A and B. The two pendulums of unequal length C and D are suspended on either side of B. Let us now set the pendulum A into vibrations. Then along with pendulum B, the pendulum C and D also vibrate but with smaller amplitudes. However, the frequency of vibrations of B, C and D is the same and is equal to the impressed frequency due to A. Pendulum C and D are said to be in the state of forced vibrations and pendulum B is in resonance with A. So, it oscillates with a larger amplitude than that of A. The pendulum C and D make forced vibrations with smaller amplitude because their lengths are different from that of A and B. Hope you have understood the video. Hope you have understood the experiment that was shown in the video. Now, quickly we will go through from the book. So, the first experiment that they were showing is resonance with tuning fork. So, these are tuning fork of same, frequen same frequency. One is fixed on one sound box, other one is fixed on another sound box and these open ends kept facing each other. So, what happens? You are just hitting this one and this will automatically start vibrating with a larger amplitude. Okay, the reason the vibrating tuning fork A produces forced vibrations in the air column of sound box. Now, this will produce forced vibrations here. Okay, in this air column, it forces this air column to vibrate with its natural frequency. So, it produces forced vibrations here. Now, these vibrations are of large amplitude because of large surface area of air in the sound box. Okay, now these are communicated to the sound box of fork B because the open ends are kept closer. Now this vibrations are communicated to the sound box of um, fork B. Now the air column of B starts vibrating and that forces this tuning fork also to start vibrating. Air column starts vibrating with a frequency of 4K. Since the frequency of these vibration is same as the natural frequency of fork B, the fork B picks up these vibration and starts vibrating under resonance. It is set into vibration but because its frequency and its frequency are same. So this is the natural body, this is like an external body and their frequencies are same. So this body starts vibrating with a larger amplitude and that's called resonance. You can literally see this vibrating with a larger amplitude. So this was one of the experiment that you saw. Now, experiment number two is this one, resonant vibrations in a pendulum. So, resonant vibrations of pendulums. So, same experiment you saw in the video. So, A and B are um, pendulums of same length, C is shorter, D is longer. Okay. Now, in a pendulum, the frequency of vibration depends on length of pendulum and you know you studied in ninth standard that frequency is inversely related to length that means lesser the length more will be the frequency c will be vibrating with the larger frequency 
compared to that D will be vibrating with a lesser frequency and A and B will be vibrating with the same frequency because their lengths are same. Okay. Now, uh, observation, you all know, when A is set into vibration slowly, B also is set into vibration, C is also set and D is also set into vibration. But if you watch carefully, B will be vibrating with a larger amplitude, whereas A and uh, C and D will be vibrating with smaller amplitudes. This is because resonance, okay? B enters in res into resonance with A because their frequency of vibration is same. But you will also be observing one more thing. As B starts vibrating with a larger amplitude, A slows down. Okay. Now there is transfer of energy. Okay. Transfer of energy because they are connected to the same string. When this starts vibrating with a larger amplitude, this will slow, slow down. It starts vibrating with a lesser amplitude. And almost it will come to rest. Then slowly this makes this into resonance. First, this made this into resonance. Now, this will force this into resonance. So, alternately, these both will force each other into resonance and alternately, they keep vibrating with a larger amplitude. Okay. When this vibrates, this slows down, uh, this amplitude reduces and slowly this amplitude increases and then this amplitude reduces. Okay. So, this is the observation. Pendulum B starts vibrating initially with a small amplitude and ultimately it occurs the amplitude same as the pendulum A. When amplitude of pendulum B becomes maximum, amplitude of pendulum A becomes minimum because of sharing of energy by them. There, thereafter, amplitude of pendulum B decreases and A increases. So this happens alternately. Vibrations of B are in phase with those of A. In phase means they reach their extreme positions at the same time. Both will reach the extreme positions at the same time. Pendulum C and D also vibrate but they vibrate with a smaller amplitude because they are under forced vibration only B is under resonance. Okay. So, explanation is very important. So, usually the question comes, they will give this experiment and ask, they will ask, yeah, they will ask what do you observe and give reason for your observation. So, observations um, yeah, you should know the observation also, all the three observation. Then, um, explanation is what is more important. So, you can see. So, first, why did C and D vibrate uh, with a lesser amplitude? So, pendulum C and D remain in a state of forced vibration while pendulum B comes in a state of resonance because natural frequency of pendulum B is equal to that of A being of same length. Okay, that's the first point. Second, therefore, there is an exchange of energy between pendulums A and B. When amplitude of pendulum B increases, amplitude of pendulum A decreases and vice versa. The pendulum B therefore vibrates with frequency of pendulum A and it remains in phase with the pendulum A. So, C and D, forced vibrations. Why? Because their frequencies, because their lengths are different, their frequencies are different. That's all. Whereas, B comes into resonance because its frequency of vibration is equal to the frequency of vibration of A. That's the main reason. Yeah. Now, we have... Another experiment, experiment number three. So, questions come from this. So, you need to understand it very clearly. From all these three experiments, questions do come. Okay. Okay. Now, generally, vibrations can be produced due to a string. String means like guitar and sitar and all. What happens? There are strings and when those strings are set into vibration they produce sound so this is vibration of a string okay the other possibility is vibration of air column due to vibration of air column example is flute so you all know flute has different holes many holes and by placing your fingers in different different holes you can produce sounds of different pitch or different frequency how is it possible? The air inside is 
vibrating the air inside is vibrating and that produces a sound okay so string can produce sound air can produce sound stretch string also can produce sound that is examples are drum and all that okay stretched membrane sorry stretched membrane so these are the different things that can produce sound so this experiment we saw was based on strings producing vibrations and this is based on air column producing vibration now this experimental setup is like this you have two glass um, this is a glass tube narrow one and this is a glass glass vessel broader one this is fixed okay this is always fixed whereas this one is movable this one is movable now by moving this up and down you can change the level of water on this in this um, tube okay when you take it up the level will come down when you bring it down the level will go up so just to change the length of um, the water in this this is used okay now what's actually uh, now a tuning fork a vibrating tuning fork is kept above the tube glass tube this is called mouth of the tube so above that a vibrating tuning fork is placed now what will happen now because it's set into vibration now the air column that is above water so water is still this part and there is air column here now when you keep a vibrating tuning fork here this will force this air column to vibrate this will force the air column to vibrate now this is your natural body this is your external body okay so this is forcing this to vibrate now by chance if the frequency of vibration of this much length of air column becomes equal to the frequency of vibration of this tuning fork then they will enter into resonance now in case of string it was the length of string that determines the frequency of vibration and it we know frequency is inversely proportional to length same way length of vibrating air column in case of air column frequency of vibration is again inversely proportional to the length of vibrating air column lesser the length more the frequency so so when you start the experiment okay so you keep a vibrating tuning fork here and slowly you are lifting this up so that the water level here comes down okay now as it comes down okay maybe initially it was here okay let's take it was maybe nearly to the rim okay then as you lifted it up the water started coming down initially you will only hear a very less sound okay because this air column will be forced into vibration so you'll hear some sound but it was of it will be very feeble but as more this water column goes down at a particular height at a particular height suddenly you will hear a loud sound at a particular height you will hear a loud sound hope you understood the observation as the water column comes down you will be hearing a feeble sound but at a particular height of the water column suddenly you will hear a loud sound and this is a vibrating tuning fork kept at above it now what has happened let's see the reason for that now whenever you hear heard the loud sound at that particular length of air column the vibrations of air column produced the frequency of vibrations of air column has become equal to the frequency of vibrations of this tuning fork and hence it has entered into resonance and therefore it started vibrating with a large amplitude resonance has occurred and it has vibrate it's, that's why you hear a loud sound hope you understood children so this is your original body this is your external body so when it was at this length and all resonance didn't occur because at this length the frequency of vibration produced was not equal to the frequency of tuning fork but at a particular height we don't know what is that there is a calculation for that but at a particular height suddenly you will hear a loud sound why because this 
um, the length of the frequency of vibration due to this length of air column will be equal to the frequency of vibration of this tuning fork and that's why they enter into resonance and a loud sound is heard right so this is the first observation so a loud sound is heard at a certain level of water okay that is the first observation and the reason for that the reason for your observation one is at certain level of water in tube a loud sound is heard this happens when the natural frequency of air column becomes equal to the frequency of tuning fork that is vibrations of air column or in resonance with those in the on the fork okay now what is your observation two so your observation two is on further lowering the level okay now now let's we'll continue the experiment by lowering the level of water in this further by lifting this up this level of water keeps coming down now so once you leave this height means once you started once the water column went below this height again you won't hear a loud sound okay again you will hear only a feeble sound at this height suddenly you heard a loud sound again if you reduce the water below this you will hear a feeble sound now again after some time at another height you will hear a loud sound at another height of water column you will hear a loud sound okay again resonance has occurred okay so this on further lowering the level of water in tube a the loud sound ceases but when the length of air column in the tube becomes three times the previous case a loud sound is heard again now i told you at another length now that length will be three times the length of this suppose if it was at one centimeter at three centimeter when this level is at three centimeter you would have heard the next loud sound i'll tell you the reason why so that was your observation okay when the length of air column becomes three times the previous one light loud sound is heard again now the reason for that second observation on further lowering the water level in the tube a frequency of air column does not remain equal to the frequency of fork so a loud sound ceases so this is they are talking about in between when the water level was in between these two okay you get here only a feeble sound but on further lowering the level of water a stage is again reached when a loud sound is heard at this stage frequency of air column again becomes equal to the frequency of tuning fork when the length of air column becomes three times the previous length so resonance occurs again that's why you heard the loud sound again um i'll explain you a little bit about the air column vibration of air column so as i told you um if you take a flute you have different holes at different points so um now suppose imagine this is at a distance 1 cm this 2 this is at 3 this is 4 and this is 5 cm now usually what you do you you can um close this part okay in a in a, a flute or anything one end will be closed the other end will be open so when i keep my finger here only this much length of air column will vibrate okay so it will produce sound of a particular frequency suppose imagine when it was at 1 cm it produced sound of 256 hertz 256 hertz okay again when i keep my finger here basically i am covering this part okay you can just imagine like a a movable gate a movable okay movable thing that can obstruct it that can okay now this movable thing i can move it to some other place now when i bring it here somewhere in between this its frequency of vibration will be something else okay say 253 hertz or something again as i increase it as i keep changing it and when my the when i close from this part again it will not 
it will be having so as length increases frequency decreases maybe 252 hertz like that it will decrease but when it comes to 3 centimeter again again the frequency of vibration will be 256 hertz again when length becomes 5 centimeter the frequency of vibration is 256 hertz that's why at all these points you will hear resonance okay so whenever the length of air column is in the ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 5 if the one end is closed okay there is another type called open organ pipe that you will be seeing in 11th standard now this is called a closed organ pipe means one end is closed other end is open and this air column vibrates and produces sound so if it is a closed kind of thing whenever the length is in the ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 5 not necessarily 1 centimeter 3 centimeter if the first res resonance occurred at 2 centimeter second resonance will be 6 centimeter third resonance will be 5 to 2 10 centimeter so at 2 centimeter 6 centimeter and 10 centimeter you will hear resonance so this is um, this is why you hear um, resonance again